identity theft. You know, in our modern digital electronic age, we have a relatively new term called identity theft. Identity theft is the fraudulent acquisition and use of a person's private identifying information and credentials of an unwitting individual in order to pose as them, to pose as the victim, to obtain credit, goods, services, or benefits. Identity theft sole purpose is a false assumption of someone else's name and identity to make those fraudulent transactions and purchases. The effect of identity theft on the victim is financial ruin, bad credit, loss of bank funds, maxed out credit cards, and even in a few extreme cases, the loss of homes by mortgage manipulation and deed manipulation. Modern identity theft is a physical manifestation of a spiritual tool used by Hasetan. Identity theft. Hasetan assaults identity. He knows that if he can control your self-perception, he can control how you live and who you serve. There's a spiritual battle raging for your future and destiny, but many people are apathetic or worse. They don't even believe it. They don't know it. Spiritual identity theft results in not knowing our kingdom identity, our purpose and destiny, which Adonai has for every one of his creation. Genesis 1, verse 27, so God created humankind in his own image, in the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. This is so profound, deep, and supernatural. We, all humankind, Jew, Gentile, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, Oriental, indigenous First Nations, we are all created in his image, every one of us. We are all descended from the same exact strand of DNA, Adam's DNA which is a genetic roadmap that traces us all the way back to him. This information, this code, this divine language of creation is about 750 megabytes, almost a terabyte of digital information, which if put in printed format would fill 5,300 page books. Isn't that fascinating? All the code that makes up who we are. When children are conceived, the child receives one strand of helix from each parent. The language, the program of the two parents come together to form a new helix from the individual strands from the parents. If two X strands come together, the child's a girl. If one X and one Y comes together, it's a boy. The only source of Y chromosome is the male. Now get this, all other chromosome pairs exchange genetic material. Mitochondrial, sisters, I'm sorry, but it's kind of like a jumbalai of everything from the last five, 6,000 years of human history. Only the Y chromosomes actually contain the genetic data of who you are. There are over approximately 2.1 million instruction codes in human DNA. And between us all, now get this, between us all, all humanity, every one of us, they're all identical except for several thousand. Every one of us in here have 2.1 million instruction codes in our DNA helix. And with the exception of several thousand amongst us all, they're identical. Dunstan's eye is exactly like my eye, exactly like Rabitzin's eye, exactly like Wes's eye. We don't have different operating eyes. Some of us don't have 10 lenses and the other have two lenses. We all have two eyes, two ears, a nose, a mouth, 32 teeth. Well, most of us. <clears throat> That's the goal anyways. So get this. Our genetic differences are approximately 0.001%. Our differences are 0.001%. We live in a world of racism, anti-Semitism, and bigotry, yet our actual differences are in the minutia, 0.001%. And those several thousand are skin, eye, hair colors, height, which are insignificant in our entire genetic makeup. In fact, scientists don't even study it. It's useless. It really doesn't make a difference. This is confirmed and known in the kingdom of God. All who trust in Yeshua become his children. In John 1, verse 12. But to as many did receive him, to those who put their trust in his person and power. So this is a whole other. Shabbat message. 
It's not just putting your trust in this person as the divine son of God, but also in the power that he had. Yeshua said, if you don't believe I'm the Messiah, believe the works that I do. To those who put their trust in his person and power, he gave the right to become children of God. My next scriptural reference is something I almost never do. I took this next verse from the Message Bible, which uses contemporary English language. The pastor who did this translation was also a poet and an author. He desired his flock to read the word, so he used contemporary language. Now, don't, don't worry, I'm not switching translations. We're going to stick with the TLV and the complete Jewish Bible. However, I really appreciated how he worded this passage in Matthew 5, verse 48. He says, in a word, what I'm saying is, grow up. What I'm saying in a word is, grow up. You are kingdom subjects. Now live like it. Live out your God-created, here we go, identity. Live generously and graciously towards others the way God lives towards you. Grow up. Act like kingdom subjects. You don't belong. You're sojourning. You're passing through this place. None of us belong here, so don't get overly wrapped up in what's happening right here. We have an eternal kingdom that will last forever for those who call and put their trust in both the person and the power of Messiah Yeshua. But we are to live out our God-created identity. We are kingdom subjects. God created with a specific identity and destiny. In the complete Jewish Bible, this is radically different. Matthew 5, verse 48 says, Therefore, be perfect, just as your Father in heaven is perfect. But when you start breaking it apart into Greek, I don't want to spend too much time on this tonight, it kind of takes you right back to the message translation. It's very interesting. So what's this tell us? What's it reveal? That identity is critical. It reveals and establishes our prophetic colony. Let's review. I've talked about this before. Our prophetic calling and destiny are wrapped up in our identity. So as a Jewish person, Isaiah 49, 6, he has said, it's not enough that you're merely my servant to raise up the tribes of Yachav and restore the offspring of Israel. I will also make you a light to the nations so my salvation, my Yeshua, can spread to the ends of the earth. That's the Jewish calling. That's my destiny in the kingdom. The Messianic Gentile calling in Romans 11, 11. In that case, I say, isn't it that they... Us, the Jewish people, have stumbled with the result that they have permanently fallen away. Heaven forbid, Paul says. Quite the contrary. It is by means of their stumbling that deliverance has come to the Gentiles. Why? In order to provoke them to jealousy. So the only reason we even have Jew and Gentile in the kingdom... Now remember, God never talks about color. Nowhere in Scripture do we read about black, white, yellow, or brown, or red. It talks about Jew and Gentile, and that division is so broke his heart, that he sent his only son to tear down that wall of partition to make us one new man, one new humanity. But there is a difference because we have a prophetic destiny and colony through our identity. There's a calling associated with your identity. So as a Jewish believer, my goal is to go to the nations. As a Gentile believer, your goal is to go to the Jewish people. And when both Jew and Gentile are grafted back into the Jewish rooted olive tree, it will be life from the dead, an explosion of God's glory and power in the greater body of Messiah. This will result in the third great and last awakening. Romans 11, verse 15, For if their casting Yeshua aside, us, the Jewish people, means reconciliation for the world, what will our accepting him mean? It will be life from the dead. And no more prevalent now today than ever before do we see a dead church. Am I saying every church is dead? No. Am I saying 98, 9% of them are dead? Yes, I am. Because it's been separated from the Jewish root and it's been dying for 17, 1800 years. For life to come back, the native branch has to be grafted back in. So now get this Ha Satan is doing everything in his ability to prevent this from happening. He knows when Israel gets saved, this is from the end of Matthew 23. We say, Baruch HaBab Hashem Adonai. We call him back. And when he comes back, Hasetan goes to jail for a thousand years. It's so hideously simple. So he's done everything in his power to prevent this from happening. And what is, what is his main tactic? It's identity theft. 
I've shared this many, many times over the years. Every Gentile church I've been in says they're called to the nations. It's not what Romans 11, 11 says. The church says we're called to the nations. We're all nations. We're, I, I've seen so many church titles with nations in it. It's unbelievable. And yet the word does not call the church to the nations. Gentiles are called to Israel. And so why would Satan pervert this? Because when Israel gets saved, he's going to jail. Now, I don't want to be stingy here. Because every Messianic synagogue or congregation I've been to says we're called to our own Jewish people. We even say that in our own vision statement right now. And why is that? Because no one else is doing it. We're standing in the gap. We have a two-edged sword as a Messianic congregation to train the Gentiles to your destiny and your identity to provoke us to jealousy, then to get our Jewish people saved and get us out to the nations. I went to Africa a number of years ago. You would be surprised how many people in the Messianic community said, what is wrong with you? That's my destiny. In fact, I, when I got a call from, they called it the Acts 16 Macedonia Prayer. We wanted you to come teach us the word. So I went. We see firsthand in this that there's identity theft, that there's confusion in real time today within a greater body. The enemy who has no power is the author of all lies and the king of deception. And this started in the very beginning. He deceived Adam and Eve with a partial truth and a lie. This is how it got started. He planted a weed, a tear, a corruption. He performed identity theft. And let's go back to Genesis 3. And, and I've, I've talked about this often, that, that the first sin was a dietary law, which is partially true. God said, don't eat this. They said, did he really say that? And they ate it. Here we are 5,000 years later still arguing. Did God say not to eat that? He did. Multiple things he said don't eat. But there's a little more to this. In Genesis 3, starting at verse 1, it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any wild animal which Adonai God had made. And he said to the woman, Did God really say you're not to eat from any tree in the garden? And the woman answered the serpent, we may eat from the fruit of the trees in the garden, but about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden, God said you're neither to eat from it nor touch it, or you will die. In verse 4, the serpent said to the woman, it is not true that you will surely die, because God knows that on that day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened and you'll be like God, knowing good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it had a pleasing appearance and that the tree was desirable for making one wise, she took some of its, of its fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, Adam, who was standing right there with her, and he ate it as well. Then the eyes of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked, so they sewed fig leaves together to make themselves loincloths. This is not just knowledge of good and evil. This is not just an awareness and the shame that they were naked. They had partaken of this corrupted seed. It's an identity attack that when they partook of the fruit, they would be just like God. There's a real crux of this. It's someone dissatisfied in who they are, and they believe the lie. They doubted their identity. This is and was Hasetone's own personal sin that got him thrown out of heaven. He attempted to steal Adonai's identities. He said in Isaiah 14, 14, I will be like the Most High God. Here's the lie. Adam and Eve were already created in his image. But they believed the lie that they were less than what God had created, and they partook of the fruit. Hasetan and his minions are fallen, and they want you to fall with them. Misery loves company. When Adam and Eve partook of the forbidden fruit, their genetic code, their identity, and this is like a computer virus on your computer. You've got all the software to prevent this, right? Their identity, their code, their DNA had become corrupted. It was stolen. And that virus you get on your computer's uh, hard drive, the purpose is to steal your personal information and identity theft. That's the whole reason you get this stuff. They want to steal all your credit card information, your address, your social security number. 
It's the same thing Hasetan does. Adam and Eve, their DNA created by God to live forever, became tainted. And this tainted DNA is passed down to us, just as David said in Psalms 51, verse 7, True, I was born guilty, was a sinner from the moment my mother conceived me. That's every one of us in this room. Because our DNA traces all the way back. We share the common helix from Adam. And as soon as his was corrupted, every one of us has corrupted DNA. Adam and Eve had become corrupt through corrupt seed. Their identity stolen, dominion taken from them. The enemy's plan from day one has been to corrupt and defile God's plan and steal your identity. Corrupt seed brings forth corrupt fruit. And because of this defiled seed, we are all born sinners with an identity crisis. And is this not the philosophical, eternal question of every human being? You've thought it yourself. Who am I? We've heard this through the span of time. Every culture has some thinker that says, who am I? Yeshua, conceived by the Ruach HaKodesh, came to earth with uncorrupted seed, with the true original DNA to restore our identity, to reconcile us back unto Adonai. Yeshua came with the original DNA, the original code and identity as God created, and when his blood covers your blood, the corrupt seed is corrected. This is why I say habitually, over and over and over again, your DNA is not corrected by grace. You are not saved by grace. The book says repeatedly, you are only saved by the blood. And it's only by receiving that substitute sacrifice of Yeshua's blood that your blood and DNA is corrected. Matthew 13, starting at verse 37. And this is very interesting because this ties right back into fallow ground last week. We're talking about sowing seed here. He answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. In the Greek, that word is actually sperma. What does sperma contain? DNA! We're back to this code, this, this, this instructions that make us who we are. So the Son of Man, he, he does the good seed. And the field is what? The world. And it's for the good seed. These are the people who belong to the kingdom. And the weeds are the people, the tares, who belong to the evil one, who still retain this corrupted DNA. And the enemy who sows them is what? The adversary. The harvest is at the end of age, and the harvesters are angels. So Hasetan, this snake, this thing in the garden, sowed this bad seed, and Adam and Eve partook of it. And the DNA became corrupted. So how do we belong to the kingdom? Our corrupted DNA that resulted in death, a program error, critical fault, identity theft, blue screen, we get in because that corrupted DNA is overwritten by the blood of Yeshua. And this uncorrupted DNA that restores life, it restores identity because it's the original DNA code. 1 Peter 1, verses 18 and verse 23. He said, you should be aware that the ransom paid, this is, this is so computer-esque. Because now we have all new viruses. You've heard about this, right? They'll hack into a hospital system and seal it and say, we'll unlock it. If you pay us a ransom, 100,000, 200, I mean, this has happened to big Blue Cross, Blue Shield, Anthem, big corporations have, have been uh, hacked and everything sealed. And they want hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars to unblock it, to un a ransom. So what we're hearing here is you should be aware that the ransom paid to free you from the worthless way of life which your fathers pass on to you did not consist of anything perishable like silver or gold. Until Yeshua... You're dead. You're the walking dead. But there was a ransom paid for you. Yeshua paid that price. In verse 23, here we go with the seed. You have been born again, not from some seed. In this case, it doesn't say sperma. It says spora, which is seed, planting, or sowing. I just love how this connected to last week. It says you have been born again from the seed that will not decay. The original DNA that was sown by Yeshua as created by God, but from the one that cannot decay through the living word of God that lasts forever. Who is the living word? Yeshua HaTorah, the word that was alive. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God? Come on. 
The defiled seed is passed through the mothers and fathers to the third and fourth generation, up to the tenth generation, even longer, if not covered and defeated by the blood of Yeshua, the living word. Curses, iniquities, alcoholism, disease, drug addiction, divorce, abuse, physical and sexual, gambling, pornography, Hasatan wants your DNA, your files corrupted, which is bondage and captivity, it's oppression. Hasatan, look at me, look at me, Hasatan is relentless. He doesn't slumber or sleep, he's coming at you 24-7, but he's not coming at you with power. He's coming at you with deception, with temptations. He didn't force Adam and Eve to eat that fruit. He lied to them, and they agreed with it. You see how this is working in our lives? Hasatan is relentless. He has come to kill, steal, and destroy. To steal your joy, because the Lord says the joy of the Lord is your strength. Hasatan, the accuser, wants you to believe that you're a sinner. He wants you to believe that you're inadequate. He wants you to believe that you're not worthy, that you're unforgiven. He wants you to feel that you're unloved, that no one wants you, that your identity comes from what you have done, from social media, from Hollywood, and what others say about you. Hasatan wants you enslaved to shame, anxiety, temptation, fear, despair, deception, Lies and depression, iniquity, offense, bitterness, anger. He wants us divided by skin, hair, and eye color. The things that make no sense and the kingdom of God cares less about is what he focuses on. He wants you to doubt your inherent value and worth in the kingdom of God. Hasatan works in and through fear, shame, doubt, deception, and insecurity. Who am I? That's not from the kingdom. Who am I? Come straight from the pits of hell. Why? Because Hasatan is the father of all lies. Many believers don't understand the kingdom warfare we're daily engaged in. The good news is Yeshua is our victory. Isaiah 53, starting at verse 4, Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. Yeshua had already died and conquered COVID-19. This is why we pray week after week after week. Not one from this congregation shall submit to, get infected with, or come down with COVID-19. Why is that? Because Yeshua conquered it 2,000 years ago. He was afflicted, smitten of God with COVID-19, 20, 21, 22, SARS, H1N1, you name it. Verse 5, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement, musar in the Hebrew, which is discipline, the chastening, the correction, the reproof, the rebuke. What you should have retained and received for your sins, he took upon himself. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Not you might be healed, not possibly you... You were healed 2,000 years ago. We just don't know it yet. We all like sheep went astray, just like David said. We're all born sinners. We turned each one to his own way, yet Adonai laid on him the guilt of all of us. Yeshua redeemed us from the lie, from the sin. Our discipline, correction, and chastisement for going astray was laid upon him him his blood redeemed you his blood saved you his blood restored you his blood gave you your dominion back he healed you he restored your identity and broke every generational curse upon you and your family beyond 10 generations that's the truth psalms 107 verse 20 he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions Shecheth, which is destruction the pit from Sheol or hell. Through the blood of Yeshua, our DNA is restored. Sin, the virus, is removed, and we are healed and set free from every sickness, from every disease, put back into our right mind, freed from every curse and iniquity. The captives are set free. In Yeshua, our identity and our dominion is restored. Through Yeshua, now, you may still be thinking, who am I? I heard, I heard what you said, Rabbi. 
But who am I? We hear this all the time. Well, I'm in a Messianic synagogue. That means I've got to be Jewish. Wrong. Does that mean I have to be a Gentile then? I have to convert? If I receive Yeshua, I have to convert to become a Gentile to join the church? Wrong. That's all part of the identity theft and lie. This is who you are. Through Yeshua, this is who you are. You have a supernatural, heavenly identity and destiny in Adonai's kingdom. You are blood-bought. You are a new creation. You are fearfully and wonderfully made unique. You are wanted, you are blessed, and you are highly favored of God. That's who you are. You are an overcomer. You're an overcomer, a super conqueror. You are declared righteous and living in God's favor. You are his. You are just like Adam and Eve. You are his. You are made in his image. You are loved. You are chosen. You are protected. And oh, are you worthy? You have purpose. You are so valuable that he gave his only son to die in place for you. You're a son, a daughter of the most high God, and you are a member of his family. You are free from all charges. You are free from all accusations and condemnation. You are the salt and the light of this earth. You are a branch that's grafted into the true vine. You are Adonai's co-worker. You're an ambassador of heaven with a message of reconciliation. You are a citizen of heaven. You're established, you're anointed, and you are sealed by God. You have the power and ability to speak things that aren't as though they are. Through Yeshua, you are completed with direct access to Abba Father through the Ruach HaKodesh. You don't have to make an appointment with me to talk to God. You don't have to go to Jerusalem and have the high priest to talk to God. You have an open door with the Father, the creator of this universe through the blood of Yeshua to talk with him daily. God did not give you a spirit of fear, but he has given you a power, love, and a sound mind. You can do all things through Yeshua who strengthens you. With Adonai, all things are possible. Yeshua has given you power. Say this. He has given me power. He has given me power. Come on. He has given you power and authority to expel all demons and cure all diseases. He has, that's right from the word. Everything I've read the last seven minutes is right from the word. He has given you specific power to expel all demons and cure all, not part-time diseases, not the little diseases like a, a, a cough or an earache, all diseases. That means cancer, that means genetic diseases, that means everything. Who, who, is, who has that power? You do. You have dominion over snakes and vipers, pandemics, anarchy, and chaos. You were given this power through the Ruach HaKodesh, through the Holy Spirit. You are to proclaim Messiah through the power of signs and miracles. You are to proclaim the kingdom through the power of signs and miracles. You are to demonstrate the power of the Ruach HaKodesh. You are one new man. You're not Jew, you're not Gentile, you're not male or female, slave man or free. You're not black, white, yellow, brown, or red. Through the blood of Yeshua, you are being transformed into the very image of God from one degree of glory to the next. That's who you are. In Yeshua, your identity is from God, and understanding that identity, who you are in Yeshua, is crucial in defeating the snares and ploys of the enemy. Once you know who you are, once you really know who you are, nothing, and I mean nothing, can come against you. Nothing can afflict you. Nothing can hold you down. Nothing can keep you back from your prophetic destiny and identity in the kingdom of God. Your trust and agreement with that or not God about your identity defeats the lies, the shame, the fear, the deception, the doubt, and insecurity the enemy continues to tempt you with. This week's very reading, James 4, therefore submit to God. Moreover, take a stand against the adversary, and he will flee from you. You must take the stand. Now that you know who you are, you must stand in the truth. All identity, gender confusion is removed. Gentiles do not have to become Orthodox Jews. Jews don't have to convert to something else. 
We are a chosen people, a royal priest to minister unto him. That's who we are. Not once in the book of Revelation is there any mention of color of who goes through those gates, of culture who goes through those gates. Only two things are mentioned, Jew and Gentile. 1 Peter 2, starting in verse 9. But you, you're a chosen people. You're a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the praises of the one who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. You were shown no mercy, but now you have been shown mercy. Loved ones, I urge you as strangers and sojourners to keep away from the fleshly cravings that war against the soul. You know why we're not as successful as we should be in the kingdom of God? We're concerned about everything else around us except for the kingdom of God. Paul said it earlier, shut the news off. Shut the TV off. Get out of the world's fear and hysteria tactics and start tapping into the real power in heaven. I talked about this with the Holy Spirit a number of years ago. All of you have beautiful lamps at home to provide light at night, shades, specific lighting on the fireplace. But if you don't plug that in, there's no light. It's useful. You can flip that switch all day long. Click, 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 click. What happens? Nothing. The light's got to be plugged into the power source for you to be that agent of light, to put that light into the darkness. You've got to be plugged in. He'll turn the switch on, but you've got to get in the power. You've got to get in the stream and know who you are in the kingdom. That's the million-dollar question, isn't it? How do I get there? How do I get to this place of supernatural shalom, this power, this truth? How do I get my identity restored? How do I rock solid know who I am in the kingdom? Peter told us in Acts 2, starting in verse 38, because they asked that same question on that shovel oil 2,000 years ago. Pierced and stung in their hearts, they said, what must we do? And Peter answered them, turn from sin, repent. Return to God. In each of you, be immersed in the authority of Yeshua the Messiah and to forgive us of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Ruach HaKodesh. Repent, turn back to God, and you'll receive the power. You'll get plugged in. And once you're plugged in, you're in unity with the kingdom of God. You know who you are. Because the dunamis power of the Holy Spirit is coursing through your body. Verse 39, for the promises for you, for your children, for those far away, as many as Adonai our God may call. It wasn't limited to 2,000. So many denominations, well, the, the moves of the Spirit, the gift things, that was for them. That's not now. That's not what this says. This says it was for them there. For your children's children, for those far away, as many as the Lord calls. Verse 40, he pressed his case with many other arguments and kept pleading with them, save yourselves from this perverse generation. That's exactly where I'm going to end right now. It's the same heart cry to us tonight right now. Save yourselves from this perverse generation. In Revelation, it says, come out of her. Come out of Babylon. We have to stop hyper-focusing on everything around us and start getting plugged back into the kingdom. Because when every one of you starts working in signs and wonders, this whole country will be turned upside down in a week. Our problem, listen to me, our problem isn't communist. Our problem is a socialist. Our problem isn't a rotten government. Our problem is us. We're the answer. And we've got to turn back to God, repent of our sins, and we'll receive this power. We'll receive this power, which will save us from this perverse generation. In fact, it will turn this perverse generation around and turn them back to him. Let's stand. Who wants to be plugged in tonight? Come on, who wants some of this? Come on. You want a light bulb with no electricity? Or do you want your light to shine so the world may see? I'm a father right now in Yeshua's name for every hand that's up in here right now, for everyone watching, for everyone who listened to this. 
by the name of Yeshua, by the spore, by the seed, by the blood of the Lamb, by that name that's greater than every other name. We profess the restoration of every identity of every unique individual that you created. And we're releasing the deutimous power of the Holy Spirit that their light may shine, that they will go into this darkened world and bring light, the light of your kingdom, the knowledge of your son Yeshua. The signs and wonders will follow them that believe. They'll throw out demons and snakes and vipers and they will stand in an authority that no one of this world can come against. That they will lift up the sword of your word and proclaim the truth of your kingdom. That this world will be forever changed. We're praying for a restoration of all the gifts of the Ruach, for signs and wonders, for a sovereign, supernatural move of your Holy Spirit. Tonight, right now, in Yeshua's name. Even now, as you're releasing healings and the supernatural, people are being put back in their right mind. Bodies are being healed right now, supernaturally. That they may be whole vessels of the light. And Father, I pray tonight, right now, that every person who can hear my voice will stand in the trust both of the person of Yeshua and in his power and know who they are in your kingdom. As mighty warriors, as David, as Deborah, to take back what the enemy has stolen, to remove the tear and release the good news upon this earth. Father, we seal this tonight with the blood of the Lamb, with the Holy Spirit, and the truth of your word. In Yeshua's mighty name, the name above all other names, we pray and release this from the eastern gate of America. Father, I'm even going one step further to restore the identity of this nation. This nation no longer knows who it is because it's been removed from the root of your word. Father, restore your word and your kingdom both in us and in this nation. That one more time we would be the light on the hill. And your glory be revealed as we come together as one. Your children, children of God. You are mighty and awesome, Abba Father. Mika Mocha Adonai. Who is like you among the universe? There is none like you, Abba Father. And we are your children. Blood-bought and highly favored of the Most High God. We thank you for this tonight, Abba Father. In Yeshua's mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. I know we've been doing this week after week, but I think it's more apropos now to seal this with the ironic benediction. The words that God said to Moses, said to Aaron, to recite these words, that put his ineffable name upon you. It's not just being his, it's being marked as his. And that's what this does. Because in the spirit realm then, this is like having the ADT sign in front of your house, right? When the thief comes in, oh, not this place, because his name is upon you. Amen? Amen. Let's do it. you and keep you. May his grace and his face shine on you and show you his favor. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.